Hello everybody and welcome to English Grammar with Amaya sir. Now we will today continue with the second part of the poem Night uh, of the Scorpion. We saw uh, I believe the first page few stanzas and now we will continue the poem. Of course we will finish it in this lecture. So I hope that you are ready with your notepad and we will get started with the first slide immediately now. So this is the first slide for us to study today. Let me read it out for you. The lines are more candles, more lanterns, more neighbors, more insects and the endless rain. Now here there are a lot of things, important things to observe. My mother twisted through and through groaning on a mat. So first thing to study is the meaning of the word groaning which means a deep sound conveying pain. Remember, not pen, pain. More candles, more lanterns, more neighbors. Well, this is climax because clearly the ideas are arranged in an ascending order. And also it is repetition because you will find that the word more has been used uh, on multiple occasions even here. Then you have the endless rain. Well, I think it is hyperbole. Why it is hyperbole is because it is an obvious overstatement. Well, I can understand that there is a lot of rainfall. Okay, I can understand that. But to call it an endless rain, endless, that I think is an obvious overstatement, an exaggeration. Now here there is pun. Now insects here can mean two things. One, it can mean more insects had entered the house. Remember, it's a rural setup. It's rainy season, so yes, there literally could be more insects in the house. And secondly, it could mean the peasants. The peasants are referred as the insects. Well, remember the line that they entered the room like swarms of flies? Well, so clearly they also could mean insects. So that is why it is pun. I want you to make note of things very nicely here. Through and through, that's repetition. I hope you remember the spelling. The word through is repeated for a better poetic effect and you have groaning which is an expression of sound, expression uh, when in pain or agony. So anomatopoeia, the groaning sound has been expressed. Alright then, so now we, I will start your countdown timer. I'm going to concede two minutes. By the way, it is very important for you to remember that whenever I give you the two minutes, don't just take a screenshot, actually try to jot down the points. You will have a complete uh, set of your notes by the end of the academic year. So you have two minutes starting now. So make sure that you are making notes of everything that you see there. They are very interesting observations, especially the pun, where insects can mean two things. And uh, the anomatopoeia with the correct spelling, please. Okay, guys, uh, hyperbole is one important pronunciation for you to study. It is hyperbole. It's not hyperbole. It is hyperbole. That is the best sound. Groaning, repetition also. We discussed earlier that the spelling of repetition is R-E-P-E-T-I-T-I-O-N. About 35 seconds more, we'll, we shall proceed then. I think you better write uh, pun explanation very properly because you will, that is how you will have to explain in the exam, giving away the two meanings it has, which can have. Last 15 seconds.
okay your time is up i'm sure that you uh, um, love the explanation of pun in this particular slide let's proceed to the next one i'm going to read now the lines for you my father skeptic rationalist trying every curse and blessing powder mixture herb and hybrid he even poured a little paraffin upon the bitten toe and put a match to it now first we are going to uh, remind all of you rather that uh, you would remember the line curse and blessing we discussed the difference between antithesis oxymoron and paradox in the last lecture so i'm sure you remember this line from there so we will now go for some vocabulary skeptic the meaning of skeptic is one who is doubtful about general beliefs so the adjective form is skeptical rationalist a person who believes in reason and behaves with logic hybrid the meaning here is a thing made by combining two or more different elements and therefore guys you will notice that if that's the meaning of hybrid over here uh, mixture almost means the same so i'm sure that later we'll study the related figures of speech this is also important paraffin here is not to be confused with kerosene because that's also referred to as paraffin here we are talking about a solid wax that is used to provide instant relief from pain so i have shown the images as well now here there is antithesis referring back to the uh, distinction we saw earlier the words curse and blessings are exactly opposite in meaning and the line powder mixture herb and hybrid well that's climax the ideas are clearly arranged in an ascending order another important thing that i told you is if hybrid means a thing made by combining two elements well that exactly is what the definition of mixture is so you have mixture and you have hybrid so that means that this will be tautology the words mixture and hybrid almost mean the same so i'm now going to start your timer as usual i'm going to give you 2 minutes so make sure that uh, you use this 2 minutes to jot down everything properly the time starts now so this is really amazing if you study properly because now we will complete 3.1 in this lecture and uh, personally i have enjoyed presenting this poem to you explaining um in, uh, the things i feel important from my experience and do let me know in the comments whether you found it uh, something that added to your knowledge paraffin is with a double f please be careful with that and also note that paraffin means two things kerosene is also referred to as paraffin so it should not be confused with that you can go ahead and google or wikipedia this under a minute more now <clears throat> i have uh, received quite a few emails from the last lecture people enjoyed that you can leave comments in the youtube channel also that really gives me a proper feedback as to how you think it's going half a minute more guys i hope you are using the same notebook that you had for the last lecture everything in one notebook for ssc is very important you will be in a very good position if everything is recorded properly at the end of the academic year those who are irregular about it will struggle to find everything okay your time is up so let's get back to the presentation and continue with the next slide let me read out the lines for you I watched the flame feeding on my mother I watched the holy man perform his rites to tame the poison with an incantation after 20 hours it lost its sting 
Now, if you see that this could also be a good example of anaphora because I watched, I watched is the same start. We discussed that in the last lecture. And uh, let us study the meanings. Rites, here it's a religious ceremony, the rituals performed. Incantation is chanting a magic spell or mantra. Mantra is an English word from Sanskrit. I watched, I watched is anaphora. Uh, that is what we discussed. The words I watched have been used to introduce the lines. Flame feeding on my mother is personification because the flame is given the human quality of feeding. Now, this is a very nice observation. It's sting. Notice there is no apostrophe here. You got to observe the difference. So this is it's without the apostrophe. And here you have another it's, but this is the one with the apostrophe. So what's the difference? Without the apostrophe, it means belonging to it. And with the apostrophe, it means it is or it has. That's what the meaning is. The dog was wagging its tail. So here we are referring to the tail that belongs to the dog. So its tail is without apostrophe. It's Monday today. Well, while I'm recording it, it is definitely not Monday, but example. So I'm saying it is Monday today. So here you have it's with the apostrophe. A subtle but a very important difference, guys. So I will now start your countdown timer. Also make note of this beautiful observation. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Your time starts now, guys. So let me provide some explanation here. It's quite simple to understand. Therefore, I'm not deliberating too much on the lines. They are self-explanatory at times because it's so simple. I watched the flame feeding on my mother. You can imagine what the poet uh, underwent. And then he says, I watched the holy man perform his rites to tame the, you cannot stop there. It trickles the poison. So that is enjambment. We saw that in the previous lecture. So the holy man was chanting some mantra while the mother was in the center. She was uh, really in great pain. And finally, after 20 hours, there was some respite and uh, mother began to feel a little better. And it's sting. So belonging to the scorpion. So it's is without the apostrophe. Very important. <clears throat> about 45 seconds more if you remember anaphora is something where the start is the same the epistrophe is something where the ending is the same we saw that about 25 seconds more Ten more seconds, guys. And if you are ready, let's proceed. The time is up anyway. And let us go to the next slide. Let me read. This is going to be the end, the climax of the poem. My mother only said, Thank God the scorpion picked on me. This is a great, great expression by mother. Okay. Thank God the scorpion picked on me and spared my children. Now, this is the selfless love of mother. This is just brilliant. This line is something that is my personal favorite. Really, I'm saying because this is mother's love. She immediately just for the moment forgot about her pain and she is just thanking God that the scorpion chose her because her children probably might not have been able to bear and tolerate all the pain and suffering that uh, she you know, was able to bear. What a wonderful poem. Absolutely brilliant. Now here my mother is alliteration. In fact, this kind of alliteration happened at the start of the poem as well. That's a beautiful aspect. Right at the start and right at the climax, you have this. The sound M is repeated for a better poetic effect. Guys, always remember it is the sound M that is repeated. You never say that the letter M is repeated. The sound M is repeated. That's what you say. 
and um, well imagery is something very important to study now there are going to be some examples in fact this is from the textbook let us see what imagery means first of all uh, imagery means symbolism the elements in the poem that spark off the senses it makes you imagine things let me give you a good example okay so uh, let me come on cam for that so let me uh, share a line if the poet has written something like oh the fresh cool breeze well it does make you imagine fresh cool breeze i'm sure you now understood what i'm saying so when it makes you uh, imagine something it 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 really uh, brings your senses alive that is imagery okay and now let us get back to our uh, slide for more explanation more examples of imagery there they are here first example is they came like swarms of flies well the meaning of that is that they came in huge numbers this is what the image suggests but then imagery has been used by using a simile here then we could imagine the number of peasants they buzzed the name of god that means that they chanted the name of god to relieve the poet's mother of the pain of the sting that's why imagery was used and uh, the way to use imagery was anamatopia so basically imagery is when the poet uses figures of speech for better impact they threw giant scorpion shadows on the mud baked walls here they searched for the scorpion in the entire house using the lanterns we already talked about how it is spun in the previous lecture they clipped their tongue while well, they collectively made sounds to deter the scorpion from coming close because nobody else should probably be bothered they thought what had happened was enough and that's why they clicked their tongue which is an anamatopia okay so i'm going to give you the countdown now you have about 2 minutes so time starts make proper notes write down all the Im imagery examples with what the imagery means i am sure that you noticed that g in god was capital but it always has to be that way reference to the almighty or divinity amazing this poem is really superb nisim ezekiel you can actually uh, wikipedia nisim ezekiel you find more about the attributes or the credit given to him quite famous about a minute more please also don't just write down uh, make sure that you write down the explanation of what is imagery along with the examples it's very important you do that so imagery means symbolism the elements in a poem that spark off the senses about half a minute more guys Now after this if you're wondering well sir isn't this the climax of the poem well yes it is the poem has ended the explanation and figures of speech etc but now we will go through some textbook uh, assignments and exercises critical appreciation of the poem we're going to study all of that so that will be really beneficial i hope for all of you okay if you are done with it let us continue the time is up of course let us now go ahead and see what we will cover first critical appreciation now what are the points to cover in critical appreciation very important well let me come on camera to share again something that i share in every lecture i hope that you are not jotting down the points while i am explaining you know at the end of every slide i give you a couple of minutes or whatever is a reasonable time i think it is then that you spend time jotting down the points do not be busy while i am explaining something please don't do that so let us go back to what i was saying we were discussing the points to write down for critical appreciation so these are the points let us do them one by one um the title the name of the poem the name of the poet the rhyme scheme favorite line 
theme or the central idea, figures of speech, special feature, and why I like or dislike the poem. If you cover these eight points, I think you would have done the critical appreciation correctly. Um, now here is the thing. Before we go ahead, just quickly jot down these eight points. And for this one, I'm not going to give you two minutes. I think one minute should be okay for this. So let me start the countdown timer. Just a minute, one minute. Just copy down these eight points. Very important. If you cover all these eight points properly, you will get very good marks out of five. This is asked for five marks, by the way. So at times, if you're wondering how come eight, point, eight points for five marks, well, you can merge one or two points. For example, uh, for the special feature, well, yeah, you can cover up that with like, dislike. Then the title and the name of the poet, well, they are two points, but you can definitely cover them in one sentence. So overall, you've got to take care of the points I have mentioned, but not necessary that there should be separate sentences for each. As long as you cover all these details, it should be fine. Take 10 more seconds for this. Okay, the time is up. Let's quickly go back to the PPT without the timer and let us now see what was my source. Well, the textbook, page five and six of your um, the, the English textbook, that is the SSE board, but you will find that they have actually provided us with all the points. So you will clearly see here the title, poet, rhyme scheme, favorite line, the theme, central idea. So this is textbook five and six, guys. So now you know the source. And this is page number five and this is on page number six. All right, let's continue. Now I'm going to share the critical appreciation of the poem. Let me come on cam to share something very important. Whenever I give you the critical appreciation, um, I have always experienced that the students just copy my critical appreciation. You can do that. But the thing is, I am not claiming that it is the best ever. Well, that's why language you don't get full marks because then there is always scope to do better, even better than me. No problem. So either you definitely you can learn from what I'm sharing. It is correct. But if there is something that you want to, you know, in your, put in your own words, you are free to do that and you're welcome. OK, in fact, so this is just a general idea of how it is to be done. You can better. OK, you can do better than this. You can better my effort. So let us start with what I have in my mind to teach you. Let us let me read this. The night of the well, when I'm reading it, don't start writing it. I have said this. I will give you time. Guys, don't worry about it. The night of the scorpion. So we have covered that detail here is a very famous poem written by Nissim Ezekiel. You, you could have put his name in inverted comma could have. Because we put the name of the poem in inverted quotes, so you can do that. Now, the poem is an excellent example of a free verse. That is, what is a free verse? The poem has neither a rhyme scheme nor a definite rhythm. My favorite line from the poem is, Thank God the scorpion picked on me and spared my children. I already told you that this is my favorite. Simply amazing, very uh, powerful this line. This line truly shows the selfless love of a mother. Despite the pain she endured, she is happy that her children are safe. So she is very happy, not because her pain has subsided. She is happy that her children were not uh, stung. Okay. Now I'm going to give you, um, let's say two minutes. No, a minute should be fine. Maybe. Yeah, a minute should be fine. I'm going to give you a minute countdown timer for this. The time starts, guys. The Night of the Scorpion is a very famous poem written by Nissin Ezekiel. The poem is an excellent example of a free verse. The poem has neither a rhyme scheme nor a definite rhythm. My favorite line from the poem is, Thank God the scorpion picked on me and spared my children. This line truly shows the selfless love of a mother despite the pain she endured. She is happy that her children are safe. Really powerful line. That. No wonder the poet is a Sahitya Academy 
award winner he deserves it really wonderful board about 10 seconds and we shall continue the critical appreciation is not over as you will notice i have not covered all the points this is just the first slide of it we will continue the time is up so let us quickly move on to the next slide uh, let me read that first the poem is about this true love of mother and about the simple life of the village very important simple life of village that's why the villagers tried their best they were very innocent but due to lack of scientific approach and knowledge well they did what they could do best that's all the villagers tried to do their best oh i'm going to proofread that <laughs> well they tried to do their best with the limited understanding they had very important the poem has many interesting figures of speech used in it such as the metaphor anamatopia anamatopia is the right sound guys alliteration and even simile in the line like swarms of flies where the poet has directly compared the peasants with a, a swarm of flies okay you can take about a minute to copy this so time starts now i have already proofread the word tried well i think it got auto corrected to tied the villagers tried to do their best guys t r i e d the villagers tried to do their best okay about 20 more seconds of course again i would like to remind you that it is not over we have i i believe one small paragraph more to go then we would have covered all the details it's just that i wanted to maintain the font size that i have done this let us now move straight away to the last bit of this let me read that the tone of the poem is satirical and emotional so the tone of the poem well that is the question that is often asked okay the tone of the poem the reason why i like this poem is the way the poet has used satire to show human follies and the effects of lack of education well this is something that we discussed in the introduction as well okay so i will now concede another minute for this jot it down and that should be the end of critical appreciation again i'm saying that this is a general guideline of course this is good but this, you can if you have something else in the mind as long as you cover these points well i'm okay with it if there is some other figures of speech that you like or if there is uh, something else in the central idea or the theme of the poem that you want to write we are free to do that that's why languages it's not like maths where 2 plus 2 is 4 there's imagination there's creativity or you can express yourself the way you want so about 20 seconds more guys now one more thing is that since this is the 10th standard uh your teacher also at school might provide you with a critical appreciation and of course you can study from that as well uh what i want to say is that the more resources you have it's not a competition the more resources you have the better it is because then you have so many things in front of you and then you can pick up the best from each probably make a super presentation so i am okay with that definitely you'll have your school to various classes that you go to your um, own imagination and this video so take the best more the merrier and then you can select the best parts and create your own stuff okay this is done and now we are going to do this this is a textual assignment this is question number 7 in the textbook page 105 it is expand the flow chart well this will be if you remember we have discussed the part of information transfer well this is from the non verbal to the verbal part why is it like that because they have provided us with the flow chart and we have to write down now the paragraph 
okay we have to write it down in words they have given us a flow chart okay so let us see what we have here let me read the points so the points flow in this manner mother then there is this agony then fights the venom now here you will notice that the textbook uses the word venom if you remember clearly during the explanation i told you this difference between poison and venom so here the textbook goes back to venom in the poem i already told you why i think it is uh, poison used in the poem is because the poet wanted alliteration figures of speech remember the point so now if you see in the exercise it is written as venom that's a very nice uh, thing to note there that i think that was purely the reason why nisse mesical used the word poison he very well knew that actually it's venom just for the alliteration the next thing is that unable to utter a word but she groans in pain and finally after 20 hours when it started you know when she started feeling better when the pain started to subside and then finally she survived so we will now create a nice uh explanation for this uh, this i don't think that i need to give you a minute for this because this is right from the textbook however for the answer let me read it first and then i shall give you enough time to write it down so this is the solution according to me let me read it guys don't start one rainy night a scorpion had taken shelter <clears throat> if you want you can use the word refuge okay had taken shelter beneath a sack of rice and unfortunately the poet's mother is stung by a scorpion now the reason i have used present tense here is because the question used the present tense so the flow chart is in the present tense that is why i have used the present tense so poet's mother is stung by a scorpion she is really in intense pain despite this she does not lose hope and cooperates with everybody Remember, everybody has been used as one word. Not cooperates with everybody. <laughs> cooperates with everybody. She is in such a great agony that she isn't able to say a word, utter a word, or say a word. But she is groaning in pain. After showing endurance, the determination, the grit, for almost twenty hours. Well, I have written it in numbers. but you could use the spelling 20 guys it is considered better if you write english rather than use numerals the pain finally has started to subside and she is still not complaining instead she thanks god that the scorpion chose her and spared her shield she was able to survive this that was the point but she thought that her children would not have been able to bear this pain such an important thing that you have covered all the points and you have maintained the tense i'm going to give you 2 minutes for this one write it down very uh, correctly don't miss out on something so your time starts now Okay. In fact, I started your timer now. Doesn't matter. So, it was a rainy night. So it was a rainy night, and the scorpion had taken shelter beneath a sack of rice. Unfortunately, the poet's mother is stung. Remember that we are using the present tense because the flow chart was in the present tense. Had the flow chart used the past tense, we would also have to go with the past tense. That's an important thing to remember. She is really in intense pain, or you can use agony, whatever word suits you. about a minute for jotting this down and i have used the word utter a word is because it is again used in the flow chart however you can definitely say that she was not able to say a word 
sometimes guys i will make this point after this time limit is over i'll make this point i'll come on cam to say that it's very important that you of course show you, you flaunt your vocabulary but only if you know the proper spellings yeah, otherwise it might backfire i don't want that to happen to you guys and i'm going to come on cam to give you a detailed explanation of this another 25 seconds let me remind you until that time a very important point i made in the previous lecture that those students have seen over years do well those who maintain one single notebook of course when it's over you got to make a new one but i'm saying that there is continuity those who just write some things in some book then sometimes they don't have their notebooks so they write it in some rough area somewhere write jot it down in the rough notebook sometimes they borrow the notebook from somebody and they don't recollect where they wrote it well that those things don't help that's not good i have seen those students excel and do well those who are very particular about where they jot down things and now to the point i wanted to make the example that i'm going to take is about hyperbole now you all know that for hyperbole what happens is students are tempted to use the word exaggerated what happens is in a bid to use the word and impress the examiner well they do use the word there's no doubt about that but then they at times struggle with the spelling of exaggerate and so in a bid to impress the examiner they end up making a small spelling error and they end up losing half a mark what they could have done is they could have just simply said well this is an obvious overstatement instead of saying exaggerate i am not saying that you should not use exaggerated well you can but then if you know the complete spelling you should do that don't just go for it if you've heard the word but you are unsure of the spelling or well, that might hurt and that might backfire and this not just applies in this figures of speech case it also applies when you're writing your own story or maybe you're uh, you know writing a letter yes you want to create an impression yes you want to write very well but only if you know the spelling only if you know it in depth then go ahead and use it otherwise not okay i hope i've made my point here so yes you can use overstatement if you 100% know the spelling of exaggerated then go ahead and write down that this is an exaggerated idea i have no problems and um that reminds me that some day i will post another spell check uh, video on the channel let's get back to what we were doing so this is the flow chart that we completed today i am also going to discuss with you the idea of google classroom or um the better way to submit your homework because this will be my second lecture and we are now done with the first poem so obviously there will be homework and i want you to submit the homework online so we will discuss about what i think is a better platform and you can also respond later by suggesting something maybe that you have in your mind all right this is another textual activity that we have to do in the textbook you have this question 6a which is about figures of speech so we have to match the figures of speech with the correct definition metaphor alliteration anamatopoeia and simile those are the questions those are the figures of speech and they have given four options a b c d now i will reveal the answer and I have decided to allot three minutes for this. Okay, so your countdown will begin. We will start in three minutes, and you will then check if your answers are correct. The reason I have given you three minutes is not just to match it, but also to jot it down in your notebook. So just matching A B C D with one two three four is not the point. make sure that you're writing it in the notepad so that time also has been taken into account also guys let me know uh how your uh, studies are going in terms of the other subjects because these are extraordinary uh, circumstances and it, they they demand extraordinary solutions 
so let me know how things are i hope you're staying home and staying safe we got to do that because the battle is the ssc board so we are just happy that we have made the right start at the right stage and do recommend your friends who are missing out maybe on these videos if they are unaware about it so that they can also benefit now you have about a minute and 45 seconds more i'm going to read out the options the very interesting options they've given you option a that they have provided is the use of the same sound at the beginning of words option b that they have is an implied comparison and i want you to note the spelling of comparison c o m p a r i s o n then it's shun and sun where well, you might just think that it might be s i o n well no it is s o n point to note the third is a comparison between two different things especially a phrase containing the words like or as the last option is a word the d option that is a word which resembles the sound it represents i am sure that you are going to get all four correct in a matter of about 40 more seconds you will check now there was an interesting email that i received a few days ago from one of my students i shall talk about it once this time limit is over it was a very interesting point that i shared with a student and the student replied i will tell you it was about how different subjects have got different um you can say their own colors or their own shades own beauty i will share that with you in about 10 seconds we got to check the answers only then i shall talk about the other things on the agenda the time is up and so here are the answers well i hope that you got the same answers so the solution is first one was b that is metaphor is an implied comparison well guys in the last lecture i actually shared this word with you uh instead of just simply saying that it is an indirect comparison well you can say implicitly compared i i did share that with you i very well remember so yes an implied comparison and the second one alliteration is a the use of the same sound uh, the example i would like to quote from the poem is my mother so my mother they both started with the letter m the third one is anomatopoeia Well, for anomatopoeia, the option D is right. A word which resembles the sound it represents. The example, if I am to quote from the poem, is groaning on a mat, and they buzzed the name of God a hundred times. The fourth one, you don't have to be an Einstein for that, because the fourth one will mean that the option C, which is not yet taken, is the correct answer indeed. A comparison between two different things, espe especially. a phrase containing the words like or as well that's a clear indication if you have the use of the words like as well that is simile be careful with the spellings all right i told you that there was this interesting email i received from one of my students the thing is that uh, the students now have understood because most of the lectures now are online and uh, this is actually the silver lining in the dark cloud that the students have realized that this is also one of the ways it could be done and why not harness and leverage technology uh, why not okay that's a resource anyway the thing is that the students are enjoying how things are being done some people learn it on apps some people use google classrooms exclusively some use the ppt some Uh, do the live broadcasting i prefer both recording it as well as live broadcasting and the students are enjoying and able to understand the concepts every subject offers a variety the students actually are loving that and that's why my salute to all the teachers who are doing their best to show the students what their subject can offer in these difficult times there's one point to note guys the thing i want to 
share with you of course i'll talk about the homework and stuff but there is something interesting i would like you to um spare a minute to note something about anamatapia that i just said they buzz the name of god a hundred times was the line and uh, this is something that this is something that i wanted to share with you they buzz the name of god a hundred times let me come to that point guys because there is the, the last year also there was this discussion that i had and i want to make my point clear uh, this is this is the part so in this particular slide the discussion that uh, i had with the batch last year as well there are some teachers who would give the second line was the name of god a hundred times as hyperbole okay look at the line i i will come on cam to explain that i am talking about this line here they buzz the name of god a hundred times now some teachers give this as hyperbole even some reference textbooks have given it uh, as hyperbole i am not denying that however there is more than one interpretation uh, the thing is as in it's not pun what i'm saying is that there are people who think it is hyperbole and there are people like me who don't quite think that it is hyperbole i will share why clearly the teachers who think that this line is a hyperbole is because buzz the name of god a hundred times well it does look like hyperbole it's a, an exaggeration remember if you know the spelling or you can say it's an overstatement however my point of view is that the peasants did not have a scientific approach they were not doctors were not trained physicians there were limited resources that they had taking the name of god uttering the name of god and chanting mantra is the best thing that they could have done so my point is if that's the only thing that they did to bring relief to mother then it is quite okay to do it a hundred times then i don't think it is a, a, a hyperbole in fact if you have ever done any kind of yoga meditation saying prayer the rosary you know you got 100 beads 108 If you have ever done that taking the name of God a hundred times is not exaggeration more so more so if they if the poem already suggests that they came in like swarms of flies so so many people saying the name of God a hundred times is perfectly reasonable that is what i feel so although that you would find it in some books it's written as uh, hyperbole i don't think it is hyperbole although i understand the point of view of why some teachers think that it is hyperbole and now let us talk about homework guys uh, the homework will i would welcome your suggestions as well but i think that google classroom is a very nice tool so i will share it in the next lecture maybe in the next lecture i will share with you the um, the id for the To, to join the classroom there is this particular code so you will know how to join and what to do and you can submit your work as a word document so let's say i ask you to write the critical appreciation once or maybe to write the critical appreciation in your own words well in such cases you can actually create a word file or and you can send it to me or maybe even you write it in the notebook take a good snapshot but take a good one and then add that as an attachment there another thing is i want to share with you uh, my telegram uh, channel so the name of my telegram channel is english with amaya sir let me use the notepad actually to write that down i'm sure that i can do that over here let me bring that up yeah okay so what i'm saying is that the telegram channel that i have i'll try to get the image as well it's english with amaya sir if you like sharing your uh, work on that it is absolutely fine it works well i have used that effectively last year so english with amaya sir that is what it is i'm going to type it okay english it's not english grammar there it's just english there for that particular telegram channel okay english with amaya sir and of course you will have my own 
a photo there and so far you'll find that there are quite a few subscribers maybe they are the last year as well there are already good grammar exercises for you to see actually do them seriously wonderful so english grab english with amasa that is what it is and let me come on cam and uh, i'm not sure you will see it here well i hope you are able to see i mean i hope i just hope you are able to see this english grammar with amaya sir is what it is and i want you guys to probably join me there and that is also one place where you can effectively send your snapshot if you do it what happens is if you do it in google classroom well that is also very effective i will make sure that i give you the choice what you want to do but telegram is better if you just want to take the snapshot and then post it to me at the moment there is uh, the explanation part that i want to do so let us get back to the ppt and uh, the thing i wanted to share with you let me take you back to the notepad of while let you stay with the notepad until i tell you what it is that i wanted to observe the in fact what i suggest we do is that we go through the slides of the poem so that in every slide there is some point that i would like to touch up again maybe sort of a revision so let us go ahead and actually do that we will start off with the intro and uh, let us get started the poet was nisip ezekiel and this is the slide that we will start off with on your screens now let us quickly run through we are not going to do this in detail as everything is done i just will touch upon some points that i might not have discussed in depth the critical elements or maybe something related to the 10th standard what do i want to share about this slide let me run through the entire slide okay in this slide what i want to tell you is that if you write uh, remember some uh, important points about these slides where i share with you the points about the poet you can write your critical appreciation better and that is a recipe to get better marks than everybody else so that's the point i wanted to discuss about this slide so the if you know that he was given the sahitya academy award you can say that this poem is written by uh, someone who was honored with the padma shri in 1988 uh, mr nizam asikar so that will add flavor to what you write i hope you understood my point let us quickly go on to the next slide and run through all the points here there is nothing of course more important than this point enjambment you will not believe how unique this point is i swear last year this point was not discussed in any of the reference books that at least i saw but well, there could be some but honestly i did not see any book that really highlighted this point although it is mentioned in the textbook i told you that in fact in the ppt i have mentioned the page number it is there in the textbook at the end of this poem so, and also note that there is a variation in the spelling as well so that is a point to note enjambment not talked about and hey here is another good news for you always be keen on questions which have not yet been asked so in the last exam that happened okay 2019 20 batch they were not asked this question so whenever something that remains to be asked from the curriculum that's always a hot favorite so you could actually benefit we have studied this already you will benefit let's run through the next one quickly let me run through the slide because everything has been covered well, here him the pronoun is very important nothing more to add the difference between venom and poison so well, that's the thing to note here i gave you a very good example of food poisoning and not food venoming well, that doesn't happen now this slide needs to be done with quickly because i already told you that point to be discussed here was this 100 time hundreds of time and uh, some teachers will say it is hyperbole some teachers will not this one let's see what we have here Uh, compound word mud baked the hyphen words i want to say one thing about this sure not all the words 
that a compound have a hyphen in them for example ice cream but you may or may not put a hyphen guys i'm making a very important point about hyphens here and i'm sure you're going to love this listen to it properly all compound words necessarily do not carry a hyphen now you will say sir does it make a difference well for some words it doesn't but for some words it does and as usual now that you have your messer here i will give you an example where the hyphen makes a difference where if you write it with the hyphen it will mean something else and where you don't write with the hyphen it will mean something else so now to do to do that to highlight that let us go to the word pack so what is my point here my point is so let's see we are discussing about ph e and the hyphen let's consider two examples here okay example a example b let's say for an example a i am going to write second hand and here i am going to write second hand now clearly you will see that there is second hand and second hand now clearly you should understand the point that you are making is that in some cases yes it is a dif different thing ice cream ice cream may not make such a big difference but here a and b are two different things now here is the thing let me come on cam for that i know that you have heard of the use of second hand in two different contexts so you will know the two different meanings i want you to write it down in a notepad as to which one you think is what so i know that you know two meanings of second hand uh, big deal which one is a and which one is b and uh, i will pull the notepad again and i think now i will in fact bring only the countdown and uh, i am going to give you um, a couple of minutes for this i am very serious about this guys think let's say one minute guys two minutes will be really long one minute your time starts now you had second hand without the hyphen and second hand with the hyphen i am sure you know that second hand has got two different meanings your duty is in another 45 seconds 40 seconds or tell me which one is a and which one is b i will reveal the answer in another 35 seconds let's see if you get it about 24 seconds and it will be real fun if you get it right you would have to do some guess work if you don't know about 10 seconds more before i reveal the solution or give you the answer 3 2 1 and the time is up this was what i had mentioned and so this second hand means the hand of the clock or the watch that shows you seconds and this second hand with a hyphen means having had a previous owner so if you want to sell a second hand scooter you're going to have to write second hand with the hyphen and if your second hand in the watch is not working well you will use option a there's a problem with the second hand by the way in one of the classes where i had asked this a few years ago i remember there was this humor the child actually thought that second hand is the second hand okay so it's not like you know one hand and the second hand that's not what i wanted the second hand is the second hand of the watch and the other second hand is something an object that has a had a previous owner i'm sure you enjoyed that even if you knew the two meanings you should know which one applies where let's go back to the ppt because we were running through the slides to complete this in a jiffy and uh, there's nothing more to discuss here let's move on with the slides okay anaphora remember anaphora and epistrophe they both are repetitions 
but they show different things anaphora shows the same start but epistrophe shows the same end that's what it does okay nothing more to discuss in this slide let me run through the next one whoa this one was important this one it, it's in fact so important that i like this particular uh, explanation because this is the one question that i get asked every year but fortunately now i can direct my students where to go happy that i was able to present this particular poem to you and uh, thank you so much for joining next time we will deal with the unit 3.0 up until next time take care uh, stay home stay fit